Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts. Welcome back for another thrift store video. Stopping off getting iced coffee. We're going to Harrisburg today, so it's going to be a long trip. Long trip. Great glorious mountains of Pennsylvania. This is very Americana. You got Wendy's across the street. You got Pizza Hut. St. Luke's is over there. So when you're finished eating all this, you can head on over there. All right. So, a bunch of T-shirts today. Not many sweatshirts. Uh, no jackets. Seems to be a lot of people are just buying them. Looking at some hats. We have this one. It's a minor league baseball hat. I've said a couple times, minor league sells very well. If anyone knows. Uh, what team this is? Let me know. It's some sort of Cardinal, but it's a minor league team, so it might be might be affiliated to the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, I think you can pretty much get off all this with tape, and it looks like it was only worn. I don't know, three or four times. So I'll buy that. I know I can get ten bucks for it, even though it's the wrong size. Giant wall around seven, three eight, seven and a half, seven and a quarter. Looking around. This thrift store looks pretty picked over. So. I did need to buy jeans for myself. Which is a great place to buy them. Is at a thrift store. But they're never... They're never by size. They're always just thrown around. Never by color. Oh, you say size. 30. Alright, so I gotta go to side. My size, obviously, since I'm a twig. It's very hard to find. So in the thrift store, second one. Um, every thrift store seems to be different. Some people hide stuff, as you can see. So this is a vintage. Oh, didn't even see it. Wow. All right, there you go. We have, this was hiding in here. Somehow I missed it. This is on sale. It's a vintage reverse weave. I've said this a couple times. Uh, they make reverse weave warm-ups. I think these came up after. You know, they might be before. The actual reverse weaves. But made in USA. Notre Dame sweatshirt. It's 250 These are probably from, I'd say, the 80s. Maybe the 70s. Not that sure of that. Probably the 80s. Um... Another Notre Dame sweatshirt. Notre Dame sells well if they're doing well, and that's in relevance to their football team. Penn State. It's weird though, nothing in the store is ever organized, so I have like button up t shirts here next to sweatshirts, next to sweaters, throwing a t shirt. It's uh, you really have to pick. That's their furniture. Some wicker. I'll see what this wicker costs. 30 bucks for a wicker desk. I had a white one, a vanity, and I couldn't sell it at the flea market for five bucks. Um, wicker, wicker's tough. You need the right kind. I don't know what the right kind is. So, a bunch of clothes, stuff like that. Got some Patriots gear for the Super Bowl. Stuff like that. Here's the brick rack. Candles, candles. Sometimes some of these pots are worth big money. This is probably not a good brand, but I see a lot of other people pick up pots and pans and resell them. Sometimes they're worth money. Toothpaste.
this. Oh, it's just a toy. Jeep life. Maybe, just maybe. It's plastic. across these a lot. These are record players, I believe. Uh, they break really easily from what I've been told. 20 bucks for this. I think they're like 50 or 60 bucks new. You can get them at Walmart. It's probably a have a heart. Have a heart. Six bucks. So it's a little pricey. I can get them usually for about three or four at auction. I don't like the traps that are two-sided. I like the one that comes in, um, and the small ones are pretty much they're good for, like I guess, mice, maybe squirrel, red chipmunk, chipmunks, red red squirrels. One thing I talked about briefly was destination sweatshirts. So here is a vintage sweatshirt, probably from mid '90s. I don't know if it still has a tag. It does. Gear is a brand that was very popular in the '90s and. Uh, these are called destination sh destination sweatshirts, t-shirts. Um, they kind of have a, a a brand on them or a place. They're very difficult to sell because you have to find somebody who really wants this. And the only people who really want it would probably be people from that town. So you really do limit yourself to a certain demographic. Uh, and they have to be looking online, has to be their size, can't be stained. So there's so many different variables that go into it. And I stay away from them. Alrighty, so welcome back for the haul portion of this thrift store video. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me how do I know what sells and what won't sell on eBay or Etsy. It's kind of come with experience. It's come with experience and education. Like I've said a lot of times, what works for me might not work for you. And the reason why that is, is because there's algorithms between eBay and Etsy and those who are selling on them. I don't know what the exact algorithm is. I think it revolves around how much money you're willing to spend on those companies, how long you've been selling, as well as how much inventory you have, as well as feedback and other things like that. Previously on eBay, I had a bunch of batteries that were $3 lower than the lowest possible price on eBay, and they sat on there for something like six or seven months. I was $3 lower than the next person, and they sold something like 4,000 or 5,000 items before I sold two. I don't think people I don't think my item was showing up for everyone. I think that's kind of in, in the reason. I think that's kind of the reason for these algorithms and stuff like that is they don't favor the the small guy. And you know, I think that revolves both around eBay and Etsy. For what works for me, might not work for you. I will go through what the difference is between filler stuff and stuff that I know will sell. So filler stuff, I would say, if you are a person who sells on eBay and strictly only eBay. It's going to be very difficult to sell this kind of stuff. And the reason why is because of algorithms, while at the same time, a lot of this stuff has different flaws. So this is a vintage Flyers t-shirt. All this stuff here, um, I would say you can probably sell three or four of these items guaranteed on eBay for at least eight or ten bucks. This stuff, if you sell on eBay, uh, you can probably sell 80% to 90% of this stuff on eBay or Etsy. This stuff is going to be a lot difficult. And the reason why is because a lot of this stuff is saturated. What I mean by saturated is, let's say, this Penn State sweatshirt. There are so many Penn State sweatshirts on eBay that to sell this piece, it's going to be a lot more difficult considering competition. The Flyers, not that great of a team. If it's the Rangers, different. If it's someone like the LA Kings and it's vintage, it has Gretzky on it, that's different. But there are a lot of different variables that go into making these filler t-shirts and it makes it much more difficult to sell them. So I'm going to go through this stuff. This is all picked up through today. We'll go through the glassware. Uh, hopefully this helps out anyone who's trying to get into reselling clothes. There's a lot of different uh, things you have to know in terms of 
teams that are well, items that are too saturated, how to get rid of stains, stuff like that that might make it a, a little bit more difficult to sell clothes online. So we have Vintage Flowers t-shirt, Oklahoma Sooner sweatshirt, a Tommy Hilfiger t-shirt. I sold one good Tommy Hilfiger, I, one good Tommy Hilfiger item this year. I know it's a hot brand right now. Not very certain about what makes it hot or what brand or what logoing makes it hot. I know the patch and the logo itself is really, really desired, but I didn't know too much about just saying Hilfiger New York on it, if that would sell. We have a Georgetown t-shirt, U.S. Marine, uh, IUP, which is Indiana University of Pennsylvania. We have an ECU t-shirt, Virginia Tech. Another thing that makes some of these t-shirts hard to sell online is something like this. You can pick up at the thrift store or you can pick up at you can pick up at the bookstore for brand new for 10 or 12 bucks. I paid 50 cents. Somebody might buy it for five or six dollars on eBay. I'm hoping to get ten dollars on, on Etsy. It uh it's a harder to sell t-shirt because there's just so much out there. It's a big name school and you can realistically just go and buy a brand new similar design, not the same one, at the bookstore for like 10 or 12 bucks. West Virginia uh, Pittsburgh Penguins, Sidney Crosby, Kansas University, we have a Notre Dame sweatshirt, Penn State, Cornell, Chicago Cubs, San Francisco 49ers. I have not sold much San Francisco 49ers stuff in the past year. I don't know what's going on with them. I know they're a bad team recently, but it's been very, very difficult to sell it. I just picked this up because I know it's vintage. It was made in 1995. So vintage stuff always rains, but at the same time, some of these teams are hard, to, much more difficult to sell. Towson, UNLV, and another Nintendo t-shirt. For the better quality stuff, this stuff, I know I will sell between $10 and $15. 80 to 90% of it will sell. This stuff, probably, I'd say 60, 70% of it will sell. But the thing with this is, is if I average a dollar a shirt, dollar a sweatshirt, whatever, I sell two, make up my whole money for all of it. So that's why I picked that stuff up as well. Purdue sweatshirt, William & Mary, very good college to sell. Star Wars t-shirt, Boston College, another Star Wars t-shirt. Pittsburgh Pirates, this is like a vintage baseball jersey. Did have a date, 1996. Say this for baseball season, nice being that kind. Star Wars, another retro t-shirt. Liberty University, vintage Penn State shirt. Brooklyn Brewery, vintage New York Yankees, Seattle Seahawks. We have another Star Wars t-shirt. These are always great to sell whenever Star Wars movies come out. Seem to go really fast. Brand new Ghostbusters t-shirt. Minnesota Gophers. This is really cool. It's a vintage University of Dayton sweatshirt. I've only had one Dayton product ever, and that's sold. So I figured, you know, I'll spend a little bit more for this. It has like a pinstripe design. Very cool. Penn State. Notre Dame. Penn State again. Vanderbilt. USC. Penn State. Another Notre Dame sweatshirt. A West Virginia football jersey. Duke University We've sold so much Duke stuff this year, it's unbelievable. We have the Patriots jersey, good for the Super Bowl. University of Michigan and an Arkansas Razorbacks hoodie. For the Brick Brack, stuff like that. Another one of these, we find these all the time. It seems to be like, but for 50 cents, great pickups. Some Pyrex cups, not sure what year this is. Uh, very hard to find Pyrex that's solid for solid mugs. I don't know why. A lot of them I find with the green flower on them. It's when I was like a blue snowflake, but these solid ones, I, I don't come across them that often. Two of those. We have a casserole dish. This comes off of like Bartender's Friend, I'm pretty sure. I think it's a part of the Verde set. I picked up a pair of jeans. For some reason, a lot of people sell these jeans online. I don't know what the whole deal is selling jeans. I don't know the right size, what brands you want. I picked these up for myself, but I knew I'd probably resell them if they don't fit right. These are Levi's. If anyone knows anything about jeans and what sells the best, I obviously know, Le I know Levi's with the big E sells really well, but you find that probably once every five years. And this Marley baseball hat. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this vlog. I know it was a lot of talking. I wanted to get that you know, uh, straight with you guys, because people out there are really curious about how do you sell clothes online? How do you know what sells? How do you know what doesn't sell? A lot of algorithms, a lot of things also is based off logoing and brands. A lot of people get too strictly based on brands, but if you have something that has a really cool design, it's vintage, it will sell, whether it be on eBay or Etsy. Etsy is a little bit more difficult. 
like I said, another thing with algorithms, you have to be an algorithm, you have to be uh, appearing at the top. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. It's been a long day for myself. Got everything unpacked. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more reselling videos in the future, definitely hit that subscribe button. As always, have a great day. Keep living a dream. Peace.